The aggression in the rhetoric of the Putin regime is growing. Deputy Chairman of the Russian Security Council, the second person in the state, Dmitry Medvedev, has unleashed a new portion of threats and insults against unfriendly countries and their leaders. The post was published on his official Telegram channel. Medvedev spoke harshly about Latvia. He called the country non-existent and also wished its president, Rinkevich's, serious injuries. The president of the non-existent country, Latvia, broke his arm. Too bad it wasn't his neck. We're waiting, wrote a representative of Putin's regime. In addition, he supported the scandalous idea of the president of the Russian Skiing Federation, Elena Vialby, to launch a missile strike on the center of London so that Russian athletes would be allowed to participate in international competitions. That's right, of course, but we need to solve the problem at its root and immediately sink the damned island of the Anglo-Saxons, Medvedev wrote. He also couldn't resist insulting Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who announced some important decisions at the upcoming Ramstein meeting. Apparently, these words of the Ukrainian leader greatly alarmed the Kremlin. Medvedev has not forgotten the signature theme, nuclear threats. He threatens to hand over tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus and to set fire in Kyiv. Even Russian Z channels are openly laughing at Medvedev's new batch of threats. In particular, the ultra-right blogger Alex Parker returns spoke out. He was outraged that the deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council is threatening to protect Belarus from Ukraine while a significant part of Russia's territory in the Kursk region remains under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. I'm embarrassed to ask, but who should Russia turn to in order to use tactical nuclear weapons against the Ukrainians on the grounds that the war has already been transferred to the Kursk region? wrote an angry ultra-patriot. Recall, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland will seek EU funding to build a network of bunkers, barriers, distribution lines and military warehouses along their borders with Russia and Belarus. The three Baltic countries who are all NATO members initially announced the plan for a Baltic defense line in January. Then in May, Poland announced a similar project called the Eastern Shield with a purpose to strengthen its borders with the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad and with Belarus. The need for a Baltic defense line stems from the security situation and supports NATO's new forward defense concept, Estonian Defense Minister Hanno Pevkor said in a statement, adding that it is extremely important to coordinate our activities with Poland. According to the government, 1.2 million people have been driven from their homes as a result of the intensified strikes. Medline, originally a shipping company, has fitted out a cargo ship offering trips across the Mediterranean Sea to Mersin in Turkey. Tickets cost $250 a person and the trip takes 12 to 15 hours. It is offering a new route for thousands of people trying to escape. Only the local airline company Middle East Airlines is operating flights out of the country, leaving thousands of people scrambling to flee for safety. Mohammed Al Youssef is the owner of Medline, he said around 400 passengers were leaving on the ship on Saturday. He said the company is offering up to four trips a week. <laughs> وهذا الوضع اللي احنا فيه ما بي ربي يطمن يعني صدقني يعني لبنان حلو نحن عايشين فيه صرنا 50 60 سنه وعايشين فيه بس ما اسمع في وضع ما في منو مليح الوضع ابدا
يعني هي بالحل وما لنا حل بس شو الواحد بيعمل ما عندك غير خيار في سيء وفي اسوء شو بتعمل بين السيء والاسوء لانه ما في طيارون ما في طيارون سالك على طول وبدك تحجز بعد جمعه ولا بعد جمعتين وبعدين بيرجع بيكنسلوا لك اياه لانه ما في محلات علماء كثير عم تطلع Thank <laughs> you.